Hey you guys, Natalie here and welcome back to Hey It's a Good Life. I am so glad you're here. In my last video, I asked you guys, what do you guys want to see next? And you voted for worms, which I absolutely love because as most of you know, I'm on a mission to help as many people as I can start worm farms. Worms are like the silent superheroes of soil and it makes composting possible just about anywhere. So if you're dreaming of the farm or the bigger homestead while you're living in the apartment or in suburbia like us, I think worms are a great fit for your modern homestead journey. And I'm so glad you're here exploring this as an opportunity to learn more about how to compost using worms. Now, when I first got started with worm farming, I felt like there were no resources out there that worked for my brain and how I learned. And so I did the best that I could with the resources that were available to me and made a lot of mistakes along the way. And now that I've been doing it a couple years, I decided, you know what? I'm going to make my own series and help other people in hopes that my teaching style is helpful to other people to learn in a really succinct, straightforward way. And so far, so good. It seems like you guys are really liking the series. Uh, on that note, this is one video in an entire series on worm farming. So be sure to check out the whole playlist. I'll link it right here. I also have a free quick start guide and an ebook, which you can buy on our Etsy shop. And I'm also working on a worm farm harvest ebook. I know a lot of you guys have questions of how does it work? How do you harvest? What do you do with the harvest of worm farms? What are the possibilities with worm farming and the worm farm harvest? So I know you have a lot of questions uh, and I wanna put them in an ebook so it's really easy, just bam, you can reference that very easily, printable, take it with you out to the garden, explore the different ideas. Uh, today, we are gonna be focusing on how I harvest worm castings, so there are many ways to do that. I will show you today how I harvest worm castings and what I like to do with them. So let's go harvest some worm castings together. Oh, last thing before I forget, I know a lot of you guys are also interested in plans for the mobile greenhouse, which is hiding over here can kind of see it yeah <laughs> I know a lot of you guys have expressed interest in getting some plans for that and we finally have made the plans for that greenhouse thank you for your patience with us we had a baby in January and it takes a lot of getting used to having a baby and different schedules and yeah I'm filming right now on a nap during a nap so let's give it up for that oh yeah and if you haven't already please do hit that like subscribe comment down below free ways to support our channel and it means a lot to us. So thank you so much. Without further ado, let's hop into this video. All right, and welcome to my worm farm. Uh, all of a sudden the sun is out, it's no longer gloomy and we're in the most disgusting part of the yard, but that's just how it goes. We won't be here for very long and that's reality. We all have like a dirty part of the yard, right? <laughs> that's where we keep the green waste and uh, all of the pots that I'm not using anymore. <laughs> and now the worm farm, which looks a little bit different now. If you've been following along for a while, you know that I kind of made a different system. I like built this contraption to hold all the bins. And then I realized that I wanted that contraption as a potting bench. Anyway, things have shifted. The worm farm is very simply now just setting on the ground, sitting on the ground. It's been set on the ground, set, sitting. Some people say setting on the ground. It has been set on the ground where it now Okay, so just a quick rundown for anybody who's new here or is not familiar with my setup. I have a stacking worm bin setup. I've also made videos about how to do a more simple setup where you just use one bin, no holes. This is a more complicated setup, but I would say in general, it's pretty easy to get started. I'll link the video to where my friend Steven actually made this entire system. It's essentially just rubber made totes with quarter inch holes in them all around the first top two inches of each bin and then in the lid as well and then in the bottom of the bin as well for drainage and it's a really simple way to start a worm farm and this lighting is so bad <laughs> it's okay we have to film between naps that's just how it goes right now and the idea is that basically you can stack two of these rubbermaid totes together and start your worms on the bottom tote and then eventually invite them to migrate up to the upper tote and then just harvest the bottom. Now I haven't done that. I've been a little bit busy with the baby and I actually just don't have a need to have that many worm castings on hand at any given point. Um, you know, Steven made this for his farm, which was great for him uh, and his, I think quarter acre farm at the time, but I just don't have a need for that many worm castings. So I haven't expanded the worm farm yet. I know a lot of you guys go, you know, what's up with the double bin situation? Is that for expansion? And you're absolutely right. It totally is to expand the worm farm if and when we ever need that, but I just haven't needed that yet. So I technically have 12 bins uh, for expansion purposes. And I personally have never actually expanded the worm farm that far yet. I haven't had a need to 
And so a lot of you guys ask like, why do you have double bins? What's up with that? And the idea is simply that to start your worms in the bottom bin, you eventually would want them to migrate upwards to the top bin so that you can just harvest from the bottom. And that is ideal. That's not what's currently happening in these bins and that's okay. It's worked out great for me. You know, I leave them on the ground here. I feed them as necessary. And so far everything's doing really well. Now on that note, let's go ahead and hop into the bins and I'll give you a little update on what's happening inside these guys. And then let's harvest some worm castings. Come here. Oh, you can help oh. me tell them about worms. Okay, I've got my little helper. I've got my little helper here. Say hello. Say hello. <laughs> Are you gonna show them how you're starting to laugh? No, no. Amazing how much can change in a year. I sat here not that long ago and I made a video using this bin in this spot about how to get started with worms. Oh, yeah, you weren't even here yet. And now we're here how many years later? And she's here and we're talking about more worm stuff. It's pretty cool. So we're here with the worms and a very simple sieve. Let me show you how I harvest worm castings. All right, so this is a really simple sieve that I made using one by twos and quarter inch mesh. And I literally just stapled it onto the top. And I made this measurements and I made this with the measurements of the top of this lid over here. I don't actually know if I intended to, I think it kind of just worked out that way, but I would encourage you if you're gonna use any kind of bin to collect your worm castings, make your sieve like the same size as the top of that bin because it will make it so much easier as far as placing it on there and keeping it kind of in place as you work. So this fits right on top of the bin that I'll be using to capture the worm castings. And I am really pleased with it. It's so simple and I used it, I made it using scrap materials and now it works for harvesting worm casting. So let's take a look at what's actually happening inside the Oh. Now let's take a look at actually what's happening inside the bin. Okay, so heads up, if you live in California and you keep your worm bins outside, it is a lovely place for spiders to hide. So I always open the lid very gingerly I would encourage any of you who keep your bins outside to do the same. Just make sure that you're looking to make sure that nobody's there, that you're interrupting. For the most part though, I mean, we all probably, you probably know this if you're here, like spiders don't want to get you. Uh, it's usually a defense mechanism when they're biting you, they're scared. And so that's when they attack. But uh, yeah, so for the most part, I don't really live in fear of spiders, but I am careful when opening the worm bins because you really never know what little ecosystem has developed since the last time you've been in there. And in taking a peek at this one, I did see some spodies, AKA spideys, AKA spiders. We call them spodies here. I don't know why, but um, yeah, there were, there were some spodies and there's a lot of spody webs. Yeah. Yeah. And of course, if you're working with kids or anything like that, you just want to be extra careful. So heads up to you. Um, I'm going to go ahead and open this. If you've been following along with the series, kind of an awkward angle here, sorry. <laughs> if you've been following along with the series, you know I usually open the bins and assess what, what they look like. How's the moisture level? Has the food been eaten? What are the levels of the greens and browns? And honestly, this is perfect. Like this is exactly what we want, is a damp sponge and all of the browns and all of the greens, for the most part, have completely decomposed and have been eaten by the worms. Now there is a bit of an ecosystem happening here and at first you might go, oh no, like that's like, I don't want those bugs in my plants, um, but it's good. It's actually a good thing that we've developed an ecosystem here. It means that all of the bacteria and all of the bugs are starting that beautiful cycle that we want. And so upon inspection, I can see that I've got some soldier flies. I've got some roly polies or pill bugs and some spiders and ants and things like that. But not too much excess of any one of those things. And so for the most part, I think we're doing pretty well. Let's take a closer look. So as you can see, we have all sorts of things happening in this bin. We've got a nice little ecosystem going and it is doing really well. So now I'm going to just take a cup to scoop some stuff out and let's look at it together.
All right, so you don't need anything fancy to harvest your worm castings. I'm just using an old plastic pot. And actually in that first scoop of worm castings, I got a worm. I was so excited because I was like, see, look, it doesn't take very much to have a worm farm. Like I've completely neglected this worm farm over the last couple months. And there's still worms, which in one of my last videos, I said how to keep worms over winter and not to worry because they would have cocoons ready to hatch in spring. And um, if it got too cold, and I think, you know, either the worms stayed alive or they had babies and uh, the babies are, are hatching now. Um, but as you can see, these worm castings are looking really nice. Let's see if I can zoom in here and get a better look for you. So these worm castings are nice and fluffy. They're not compact. Our worm castings are light and fluffy. They're about the texture of a damp sponge, the moisture of a damp sponge, I should say. And overall, I'm really, really pleased with what I have going on here. So let me show you, if I was going to harvest this whole bin, what I would do. I, you literally could just take a scoop of this and use it where you need it, whether you're gonna make a simple worm tea or an aerated worm tea or a root drench or a top dressing. Like there's so many ways you can use worm castings. Uh, you could literally just use this just like this, but let's say you wanted to save bigger worms. Like let's say there were a lot of big worms in your bin and you wanted to get out any remaining like bigger particles. Like I do have some leaves and some pieces of wood in here. If you wanted to sift those out, this is what I usually do for when I usually harvest worm castings to make worm tea because I do like that, that finer, um, finer product. So what I would do next is literally just run it through the sieve. So this is an old tote that I have with some old soil in it. Um, a lot of you guys know I killed all my plant starts with a bad bag of soil. This is where that soil now lives. I'm not really sure what to do with it. If you guys have any recommendations, let me know. I personally will not be reusing this soil anytime soon. And I know some people say like, oh, you can revive old soil, but I've just never had luck with that. So I'm not saying that you should add worm castings to old soil. I just happen to have old soil in this bin. Uh, but these worm castings, like let's just say that this bin was empty. I could fill this entire bin with worm castings and either sell those worm castings, share those worm castings, use those worm castings. And basically the end result will be a very fine product. So let me show you how we get that fine product. I mean, truly, you're just going to kind of rub this over the surface like this. And when you've got the right consistency of worm castings, oh, I see baby worms. When you've got the right consistency of worm castings, it will just kind of fall right through and any of the bigger particles will stay towards the top. Oh, see, look, a baby worm. We found one, Ruby. So see, we've got baby worms here and uh, that makes me very happy to see that because it means that our, our worms had babies over winter and the babies are here. So when you find these worms, I recommend holding on to them in your little container here and placing them back in your worm farm. You can also collect all of those worms, create little baggies and sell those. That's, that is another option. So, I, I mean, I'm kind of just throwing out a lot of ideas for you guys to consider. And really it's up to you. Like, what are you going to do with those worms and worm castings? Because there are so many options. Oh, here's another worm. So here's a little baby worm. So if you're not interested in smashing him against the screen, again, you can just put him in your container save him for later or put him back in your worm farm. So by sending it, by sending it through the sieve, I've sifted, sieved, sifted, I've sifted out some bark, some rocks, some like larger items that I'm not really interested in having in my final product. Here's what that looks like. So just kind of like these random odds and ends, which I'm just going to throw back in my worm bin because eventually they will decompose and it will be good food for the worm for the worm farm now let me show you what our final product looks like ah it's so good you guys they're so light and so fluffy and so ready for use there are so many ways that i could use this today um, these worm castings are so good they're so much better than what you can buy in the store and when you get this going i mean seriously you guys you know that other gardeners want black gold they want worm castings and so if you really got a decent setup going for your worm castings for your worm farm you could easily sell worms sell those worm castings i mean i think it's a very profitable business idea so something to consider
Uh, it's something that I'll be doing when I have a plant sale later this year and it will be another thing that I can offer from our homestead that is so low maintenance. It really is a really awesome product to have on your homestead because not only will it add so much vitality to your garden, it's also something that you can share and or sell. And these are really great. People would be so happy, thrilled to buy these from you. These are a fantastic product. I'm really, really pleased with how these turned out. So now what? Now what do we do with these worm castings? Well, today I'm going to be adding them to some house plants because I have some house plants that need some tender loving care. I know, we got worm castings, it's exciting. I also have some plants that I recently transplanted that are struggling a little bit and could use a nutrient boost, so I'm going to add them directly to those plants that need a little help. That is one of the cool things about worm castings is that you don't have to worry about processing them or letting them age or sit for a little while is that you can use them right away. I know, it's so exciting. <laughs> I know, I know you want to move. Let's move. Oh, a burp. Thank you so much for joining us. <laughs> Thank you so, no. Thank you so much. <laughs> hey. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us today, you guys. I hope this video helps you learn a little bit more about how to harvest worm castings, ways to use those worm castings, and be sure to stay tuned for that new harvest worm farm harvest ebook coming soon to our Etsy shop. I will link it down below in this video. If you guys have questions about how to harvest worm castings from another type of system or just questions in general, in general, be sure to leave a comment down below. You can also reach me on Instagram at Hey It's a Good Life. And until next time, you guys. All right, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so no. Thank you so much. Hey. Hey, hey, hey. Thank you so much for joining us today, you guys. I hope this video helps you learn a little bit more about how to harvest worm castings, ways to use those worm castings, and be sure to stay tuned for that new harvest, worm farm harvest ebook coming soon to our Etsy shop. I will link it down below in this video. If you guys have questions about how to harvest worm castings from another type of system or just questions in general, in general, be sure to leave a comment down below. You can also reach me on Instagram at Hey It's a Good Life. 
And until next time, you guys. <laughs>